What? You've got to be kidding me. I've paid taxes all my life, and now you're telling me my Social Security is going to get taxed too? <laughs> yep. Uncle Sam never lets an opportunity to tax income go to waste. The quick answer is yes. You might be subject to tax on your Social Security income. And I say might. It all depends on a unique income calculation and where it falls on an income threshold scale. The answer lies within the edge of your seat, page-turning confines of IRS publication 915. Social Security and equivalent railroad retirement benefits. Just in case those folks working on the railroad all the live long day need to get back on track. First, to calculate what Social Security calls your combined income sometimes referred to as provisional income. Here's what they're combining. All your income. Then you add in any non-taxable interest. Municipal bond interest would be an example of that. Toss in half of your Social Security benefit. And there you have it. Your combined income. It's pretty much all of your income plus tax-exempt interest and half of your Social Security benefit. Then check it on the table to see how much of your benefit is subject to tax. Subject to tax is the key phrase. This does not determine the tax. Only what portion of your Social Security is added to your taxable income. The actual tax is determined by the federal income tax system. And that's based on your total taxable income and your tax rate. If your combined income is under $25,000 for single filers, or under $32,000 for married filers, you're home free, at least from taxes on your Social Security. You can enter zero on line 6B of your 1040 and disembark at the next station. Single filers with combined income from $25,000 to $34,000 are subject to tax on 50% of their Social Security. Married folks falling in the $32,000 to $44,000 range are also subject to half their Social Security being taxed. And if your combined income exceeds $34,000 as a single filer or $44,000 as married filing jointly, the amount of your Social Security subject to tax jumps to 85%. Yeah, a few more subject to references in there. How do you figure out how much is really subject to tax? Well, you can dig into the worksheets inside of publication 915. <laughs> But you know how that goes. Multiply line 1 by 50%. Is line 7 less than line 6? Subtract line 11 from line 10. Multiply line 13 by 50%. Add lines 15 and 16. And multiply line 1 by 85%. And then compare it to line 17. Buried in there somewhere in the lines is comparing half of your Social Security to half of the amount over the base amount. Or cut to the chase. Stop all the line jumping and just calculate the numbers they're comparing along the way separately. <laughs> Here's how you do it. Three calculations and you pick the smallest one. First, take 50% of your Social Security benefit and add 85% of your provisional income that exceeds the second base amount. Next, take 50% of your provisional income that exceeds the first base amount and 35% of the provisional income that exceeds the second base amount. And lastly, take a straight 85% of your Social Security benefit. You should have three results. Naturally, you take the lowest amount. I find doing that a whole lot easier than zigzagging down the IRS worksheet. Let's check an example to get a feel for the concept. All right, we've got a married couple. They have $40,000 of income from various sources. Their Social Security income is $30,000. That makes their combined income for our purposes $55,000. Half of Social plus the other income. First, we'll take 50% of Social Security, $15,000, and add 85% of their provisional income in excess of the second base amount. $55,000 minus $44,000 is $11,000. 85% of that is 9,350. Add that to the 15,000 for a total of $24,350. Next calculation, take half of the provisional income that exceeds the first base amount, 
$55,000 minus $32,000 equals $23,000. Half is $11,500. Add 35% of the provisional income greater than the second base of $44,000. 35% of $11,000 is $3,850. Add that to the $11,500 for a total of $15,350. And the final calculation, 85% of Social Security. 85% of $30,000 is $25,500. In this example, simply taking 85% of Social Security would not have been the least amount. Sometimes folks confuse the 50% and 85% figures thinking they're tax rates. As in, hey, I'm getting taxed 85% of my Social Security. Not even Uncle Sam would leave you with only 15% of your Social Security. Those are the percentage rates of your Social Security subject to, subject to tax, amounts added to your total income, not the actual tax rates. The actual tax rate is determined by your particular taxable income and your tax bracket. That's the concept. That's how you do it. I'm guessing most folks turbo it or H&R block it or hand it off to their CPA or tax preparer. Let me know in the comments what you do. Software, someone else, or do you go old school and work the forms and worksheets yourself? Sometimes the social security tax gets mixed up with the earnings test. I know. Start talking about social security and it all starts seeming like you're brain derailed. The earnings test is different. That's for folks who are taking Social Security early, before their full retirement age, as Social Security defines it. If you work while taking Social Security early and make more than a specific baseline amount, $1 in benefits is held back for every $2 you earn above that amount. In 2024, the exempt amount is $22,320. We'll dig deeper into the earnings test in another episode. Yes, a portion of your Social Security could be subject to tax. And more Americans are being subject to tax every year as those provisional income levels are not indexed for inflation, even though Social Security benefits are. Grandpa said, if you can't do anything about it, don't fret about it. He also had this one about a couple of life's certainties. Don't mess with Texas. Don't mess with taxes and don't mess with the IRS. <laughs>